Hi, this is Justin and welcome to Simple Believer TV. This channel is for those who desire to better understand who God is, who they are to God, and how to walk out this Christian life. I'm here to simplify the scriptures to better help you run the race that God has called you to run. So thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for subscribing. Enjoy today's teaching. Hi, this is Justin and welcome to Simple Believer as we continue with mile marker number two, Running by Faith. And this is our third video in the little section on how to deal with problems. And today I believe that this simple understanding when it comes to what I'm going to share with you in today's session can radically change your life. Now, I don't say that every single session. The reason why I believe this is so important is because if you learn how to view your problems accurately from a divine perspective it can change the way that you uh, respond to them you know we talked about responding we talked about our proper response we talked about uh, what is a non proper response to problems but today we're going to talk about how you view your problems it makes the world of difference now realize everyone has problems but not everyone one responds to them rightly, and views them accurately. Listen to this quote by Theodore Rubin. He says these words, The problem is not that there are problems. The problem is expecting otherwise and thinking that having problems is a problem. When you begin to expect a life that should have no problems, now we would never say that because we know everybody has problems, but anytime we come through a problem, we're like, oh, why is this happening? Or how can this happen to me? Or why in the world would it happen right now? It's like, you're supposed to know that problems are coming. You will never know when they do come. Sometimes you can have the foresight and so forth. But for the most part, they are unanticipated um, halts of progress in our life, making something that was going good no longer going well. <laughs> so problems are going to be there. And if we think we shouldn't have problems, that is actually the problem itself because it's going to set us up for big failure. So a problem, again, is an unanticipated or sudden check in our progress. Now, whenever you deal with a problem, you have to know this one thing or at least posture this certain way that I am going to make it through this problem. That is half the battle right there. I'm going to make it. So whatever it takes to get through this problem, whatever it takes to get back on my feet, whatever it takes to push through all the pain, whatever it takes to overcome some of the rejection, I am going to make it through the problem that I'm facing right now in my life. So here it is. Here is the insight that I wanted to share with you that I think can literally impact your life today instantly as how you view problems. How you view your problems determine how you respond. So we talked about responding. We talked about how you shouldn't respond. But what determines how we respond? It's how I view the problem. My view of that problem, whether good or bad, will determine how I'm going to respond to that problem. And at the end, I'll show you how to correctly do that just as well. So how I view a problem determines how I'm going to respond and how I respond to a problem determines what that problem produces on the inside of me, whether character that is stronger or whether bitterness and, and anger and frustration and disappointment. So how I view a problem, when I view a problem as an opportunity to practice God's word, to believe a promise, to stand in the face of adversity, Adversity, to trust God when it doesn't look like he's coming through. When I view a problem as something that will help me grow rather than hinder me from getting what God wants, that determines how I'm going to respond. If I see problems that are, why is this happening? This should never happen to me. I'm going to respond negatively. And however I respond determines what happens on the inside of me. James 1, 2, 3, and 4, it says these words. My brethren, 
Count it all joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Your faith is on the line. When a problem comes, when a trial or storm comes, it's to test your faith that has nothing to do with you and everything to do with your faith in God's Word. And he says, when you count it all joy, that that testing will produce patience. So if you don't respond by counting it all joy, I want you to hear this very, very clearly. If you do not respond properly, that testing will not produce patience. Say, if you don't study for a test in school, when you take that test, if you don't study, will you fail? Yes. Will that failure cause you to go backwards or cause you to go forwards? Backwards, right? It hindered you, did not promote you. If you prepared and a test came, and you actually aced that test, it now catapulted you forward. So problems, not all problems make your faith strong. The only problems that make your faith strong are the ones that you respond to by counting it all joy. When you count it all joy, it produces patience. Patience will have its perfect work and it will make you complete in life, lacking nothing. All of us want the end result, but we don't want to face off sometimes with the testing. So you can... You cannot choose what happens to you, as I mentioned in the video before this, but you can always choose how you're going to respond to what happens to you. If we do not re respond correctly to our problems, they will destroy the potential benefits that that problem contains within it. All problems, although they hurt us circumstantially, all problems contain potential for me to stand upon that problem problem and catapult to the new or next level in life. Romans 8, 28 and 29. And there's a video specifically on this verse to help you understand, do all things work together for my good? That's a great question to ask. And I hope you have a chance to watch that video even after this session. Romans 8, 28 and 29 says this, for we know that all things work together, all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. When you respond to problems correctly, those problems work together for your good. When you do not respond to them correctly, hey, whatever you face in life, they do not work out for your good. It's to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Loving God is obeying His commandments. When I respond in faith, all things work together for my good. So if we respond rightly, in a right fashion to problems, as you went through these last three video sessions, if you respond rightly, problems can be the greatest single blessing in your life. No kidding. The problems that you face Although painful, although you would wish it upon nobody, you wish you weren't even going through it yourself. If you respond right to whatever problem you face, it can become the greatest single blessing inside your life. I've heard testimony after testimony of people who have chosen to view problems rightly, respond to them in the right fashion, go, you know what? I'm thankful that I had to go through that particular situation. I would wish it upon nobody. I actually wouldn't want to go through it again, but I'm thankful that that problem produced something on the inside of me, inside of my own life. So remember I said two videos ago, if you're following in the order of these videos on how not to properly respond, is that problems can be good if it creates within us a sensitivity to help others who are in need. And there's a verse that I wanna leave off with in this particular session. And this verse is to challenge you to not only know what you're going through, but to know that what you're going through is going to be a help for you to help someone go through the same problem. It's going to give you compassion, empathy, sympathy, so that you can look at somebody else and go, I know what you're going through. I know how hard it is, but I'm going to help you through it. So listen to this verse, 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Listen to this. He comforts us in all of our tribulation. Look to God when you're going through a problem, as I mentioned before, and trust yourself to God and his comfort will be upon you. But it, it says this, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort that we ourselves were comforted by God. 
When you're going through something and you, you receive the comfort of God, know that you are to now translate and take that comfort and now you are to show somebody else the same care that God showed you. There are so many people in your life that help you through problems. Go and be somebody that helps somebody else. Hey, don't correct them. Don't rebuke them because they're going through a tough time. They may be fleshing out. They may be emotional. Don't just jump on their case. Make sure you say, you know what? I'm going to walk this thing through with you. I'm going to walk through this problem with you so that you are an overcomer. You're not a victim. And as we walk through this, I hope you experience the comfort of God. So realize you're going through a problem today because it's setting you up to help somebody go through their problems just as well. So respond in the right way. How you view your problems determines how you're gonna respond. And how you respond determines what happens in you. Will it make you better or will it make you bitter? So respond rightly. Entrust yourself to God and to His will. Declare God's promises rather than complain about the very things that you're going through. And you'll begin to see God move inside your life. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what God's gonna do in your life. I'm excited that with just these three videos that we've covered in the last number of uh, times we've been together about problems, that it's transforming the way that you see problems, that the spirit of complaining is breaking off your life and the spirit of rejoicing is coming upon you so that regardless of what you face, you can count it all joy. Not because you're faking it, not because you're denying anything you're going through, but because you want that problem to produce inside of you patience. So that patience, when it have its, has its perfect work, will cause you to be complete, lacking in nothing. Oh, I wish you the best. I can't wait to hear about how these, uh, uh, these, these, this, this content on problems is, is helping and, and transforming your life. So please let me know. And remember, tag a friend. Encourage somebody to be a part of this program with you. Let somebody know about Simple Believer, and I believe they will be a blessed as blessed as you have been blessed just as well. So once again, thank you for being with me today. I hope you are blessed. Can't wait to see you in our next session. God bless you.